Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at alchemy a little bit today. We're going to go through some of the synthesis parts of this, just the traditional subtractive synthesis. Because this has so much to it, we need to break down the parts of alchemy into really manageable chunks. And so that's why today we're going to look at just the real traditional subtractive synthesis here. And to get to the starting place, click on the file and say initialize preset. That'll get rid of everything except for a basic saw. And that'll be our starting place. So global shows you all of the things that are the global operations for alchemy, but we're going to click on A and go into just the, the first of the four sound sources. And over on the right, you can see we have additive, spectral, pitch, formant, granular, sampler, and VA. And so this right here, the vintage analog, that is where we're going to actually do a lot of our synthesis source selection for subtractive synthesis. So down under here, we have some of our uh, wave shapes that we typically would expect. We have our basics, the saw, sine, square, and triangle. We have more complex ones. We have some pulse. We have some additional saw, sine, and square waves here, including some things which are called vintage or refer to specific instruments and things like that. So we're going to actually choose one of these ones instead of the basics. You'll see the wave shape shows up here, and that's our sound source. I find that some of those ones have a little bit more interesting harmonics. And so as we're doing things with filters or combining, we actually have a kind of a cool sound with them. Okay, so what then we have here are a bunch of controls which allow us to do our subtractive synthesis. On the left, we have our filters. We have three of them, and we can run them in series or in parallel. So series means it goes from one, then into two, then into three. And parallel means that it'll go through whichever ones are turned on simultaneously and get mixed back together at the end. For most applications, I'm only using one, sometimes two, rarely do I really get into three filters simultaneously. But for one, it could be that I'm gonna create like an attack or something with the high frequencies. And the second one, I might do something with the low frequencies. And so that's why I'll use one or two most of the time in serial and not in parallel. But there's always a reason to have this flexibility. There are some cool effects and things you can get with it. So this is one section we're going to look at. And then we also have some other things over here which are really cool. We have overall volume and symmetry. Symmetry is going to change the overall shape of the, the, the shape that we're using, the waveform. Then we have phase and sync. We're not, I don't know if we really have time to get into phase and sync the definitions, but of these two, I typically use the sync most often because what it does is adds another timing control to our wave shape. And so say this gets repeated at a certain frequency every second, this one actually will superimpose a different timing scheme at a different frequency every second and so this wave shape may just make it through part of its overall wave shape before it is asked to start over. And so you end up having this combination of pitches, and it's a really cool way to add some very interesting sounds to your sound. Some really cool harmonics and other parts of the sound get added when you start messing with the actual sync of your wave shapes. And then over here on the right, we have our unison settings. This allows us to have more than one voice played simultaneously. So this is just one right now. If we turn this up to two, it'll have two of the same exact settings played and they won't be in tune. The detune actually allows the individual voices to be separately tuned. So that's together, and then full detune. 
The default, of course, is at 50. Now, with this, it can actually get pretty loud because it actually is adding them in. It's not turning them down necessarily. But you can actually turn down the overall uh, sound source here and turn this all the way up and come up with some really thick, fat sounds coming from this single oscillator. Down below, we can add some noise in if we want. And we can do some really cool things with this, getting it to be an attack onto our sound. So let's talk about the modulation just for a moment so you can understand how the modulation system works. And in doing so, we'll add a little bit of an attack to our sound. And then that same process for modulation works with any of these objects. So for instance, I'm going to click on the volume for this. And this will allow me to add an envelope to the noise so that it just comes in right to the attack of the sound but doesn't sustain like it is right now. So listen. That noise just keeps on going. So we're going to come down here, turn on. I click on it first. The modulation section actually then switches to that. So noise volume A. Turn it on. I'm going to choose down from here. Let's do a new envelope. And then with the envelope here, you'll see once everything's going to auto select as we go through here. I created that. You'll see number two is now selected under the AH DSR. So now I can come through like this. And we can actually turn up how much that's going to apply to it. So now you can hear there's a little bit of an attack from the noise. So again, you select the parameter, you turn on modulation, you select the source for the modulation, you edit that, but you also have to turn up the depth. Because of the this knob here, we can actually go in the negative. And you'll hear just tail but no attack. And now we hear just attack but no tail. And that just adds a little bit overall. We can turn down the overall maximum here with the original knob. Now we have that just little tag of noise at the very beginning. So again, this works the same way with our filter. I'm turning on the filter. And the very first one, we can set the cutoff down if we want or up. We can go back and forth. But I'm going to select this. I'm going to turn on modulation, come down here, add a new envelope. Turn up the depth. There you can hear that one. If we want to leave that all the way up, then you might have to use the depth and the negatives to, to hear what's doing. Okay, so let's set this down. Now we have a filter engaged that's attached to an envelope. We have the noise, which is adding a little bit of attack there. We could actually do some other creative things here. For instance, if we want to make more of like a super saw here with four of these, let's actually have the detune being modulated. Turn that on. This time let's just use the LFO for that. Turn up the depth. 
And then for the rate of this, we want that to be a little faster. So that's actually a cool way to add some additional pulsing in there using the detune option of our unison section. Now we can do that with any of these. So we, for instance, this make it a little crazy here because having the sync modulate is gonna be quite a bit different sound, but let's do a different uh, amount than we would with the other. So for instance, let's do a new LFO, LFO two. We can go really strange with this. And so you see this modulation technique with the sync doesn't work nearly as subtly as with the detune option. We can always turn it back off, turn the sync back down to zero. Now we've spent time just with our first oscillator. Because we have these four different objects here, we can actually do or add with all of them. So for instance, with global, let's turn on B, go into B, let's load up something else here. Well, we'll keep it with a saw, but we're gonna change the tuning. Now I wanna turn off A for just a minute, just so we can hear B by itself. And let's turn on a filter and just dull this down a little bit, but also turn up the resonance. This is gonna change the overall sound of it. We could even add a little bit of drive. Mix it back with A. Now it's still cutting through a little bit differently and part of that is because we don't have the same envelopes and the same modulation happening but we could do something like that as well with this. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. So we could, for instance, take some of these other options here and modulate them with the same speed as the other one. I think it's maybe a little too loud still. Let's just soften that down. Okay, we're really getting a rich sound now because we're continuing to add things. Let's just do one more. And with this one, we want to do just like a sub bass sound to this. So we're going to do a sine wave. Let's turn off A and B for a moment. Perfect. We're going to take this. We want to take this down at least an octave, maybe more. We'll start with one octave. 
Oh, that could work. Now you'll hear with the sine wave, you're not going to do too much in terms of harmonics because it's a sine wave. So you don't really need to think about that too much. We could pull this up into two and detune just a little bit. Okay, let's go back out here. Okay, so this is probably a good place to stop with this patch. We could add another sound to it if we wanted to. Full four oscillator patch. We could come through and use more of the modulators. We have a few more we haven't even looked at, including one of my favorites, the sequencer. But we're not going to worry about those right now. That's for a different day, talking about different techniques. We could add some of our effects onto this as well, but again, we're not doing that right now. I think that we've looked at a lot of the basics that we would expect in a subtractive synth instrument. And honestly, there's so much you can do with this particular instrument, which really makes so many of the other subtractive synth tools in Logic, not necessarily obsolete, but this is just so much more powerful and can do all of what the other ones can do. So it's kind of making a few of them even more obsolete than they already are. Great tool for subtractive synth, but again, as you were probably aware, you can do so much more with this. This is just one aspect we're looking at today. Okay, hope you enjoyed this little bit longer look into the subtractive features in Alchemy, and we're going to be doing more of these type of videos where we're actually explaining how to set parameters and make settings and create patches.